we're so glad each and every one of you are here today and join us as we begin the academic year. But it is a particular pleasure that we begin our year just as the new commander is beginning his year and his command at Air Force Global Strike Command. Sometimes Barksdale Air Force Base and Centenary College exist on the same street without really even realizing what great institutions are just down the road from one another. And so today it is wonderful to celebrate that connection, particularly with General Rand, giving of his time in his busy schedule so generously to be with us today. General Rand, I want you to know that when I first arrived here at Centenary College, the very first civic event that I attended was the stand-up of Global Strike Command. And when I went there, I have to confess that I had some misgivings about going to the stand-up of the Global Strike Command because of your mission, the nuclear mission at Global Strike. And I was concerned a little bit about how this would sit with my own sense of um, values. But it was during that service, during that ceremony, the ritual that began the Global Strike Command, that I realized what a profound and solemn obligation the airmen and the officers of Global Strike Command take on behalf of all of us in this room, on behalf of our nation, and indeed, maybe unlike many other units, on behalf of the entire world. And I realized during that ceremony how much you and we are about the same mission. And that is that we all want a peaceful, stable world. You achieve it through projecting power and strength around the globe, and we do it by educating wise, caring, moral leaders and sending them out to make this world a peaceful, more just, and more sustainable place. And so we join you in uh, the, the common cause of making this world more peaceful and more stable and more just for all of us to live in. We thank you for what you do and for what the men and women under your command do each and every day. And we particularly welcome you to our campus so that you can understand what we do in our attempt to encircle this world with wise, caring, moral leaders. General Robin Rand is now the commander of Air Force Global Strike Command. He was commissioned in 1979 after graduating from the Air Force Academy. He has had staff tours on the Joint Staff, Office of the Secretary of Defense, and the Air Staff. General Rand's previous commands include the Air Education and Training Command, so he too is an educator at heart and by profession. General Rand is a command pilot with more than 5,000 flying hours, including more than 470 combat hours. Would you all please join me in welcoming General Robin Rand. Can you all hear me out there? That's a motley group out there, these, the class of 2019. I tell you, Dr. Rowe, thank you for the introduction. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Peace is our profession. Peace is our profession. It's an honor to be able to be here and speak at such a quality institution like this college. I did a little research and I, I learned that this is one of the 30th oldest universities in the United States. That's phenomenal. So they've been in the business here for the last couple centuries producing men and women of character. And so I salute all of you, certainly to the faculty. Thank you for what you do as you help produce this next generation of leaders that will see our country well into the 21st century. So to all of you, thank you. I mean that. I also am impressed with the curriculum here. And I just want to congratulate those young men and women sitting out here for, for being selected, first of all, and then just encourage you the very best. You know, I was a little intimidated. What does an old guy like me say to a bunch of young 18 and 19 year olds that they would find remotely interesting? And I'm not sure I, I, I'm gonna capture their attention, but I'm gonna give it a, a, college, a college try. Uh, but I do look forward, Doctor, to working with you and your staff. And my wife Kim and I are honored to be here in Bossier City, Shreveport. And uh, we love the hospitality and we are very excited about being part of this great community. So thank you. Uh, it's a big honor for me. When I told my wife Kim that I'd been invited to speak at the convocation, she simply asked, 
Why you? <laughs> See, she is all too familiar with my underwhelming academic prowess at the Air Force Academy, okay? So I, I, I was on the other dean's list, okay? <laughs> I'm not laughing. <laughs> Funny to you. <laughs> so to, to these uh, soon-to-be graduates in the class of 2016, wow. And to our class of 2019, first thing I want to tell you is congratulations. Wow. Way to go. You are a truly wonderful time in your life. I hope you enjoy it. The college experience is a privilege that many in the world will never enjoy. You are here to learn and you are here at a great place to do so. So the oldest chartered liberal arts college west of the Mississippi River. So you have a lot of heritage and a great legacy. From what I've been told, some of you already figured out how to enjoy yourselves. <laughs> During a recent trip to Paris, I heard you were encouraged to broaden your horizons and to see the world and how it operates. I understand that some of you even tried that delicacy called escargot while in France, yet you decided to stick with the better known French cuisine called Les Big Mac. <laughs> I also heard that you were divided into squads. I can relate to that. We have squads in the Air Force as well. And I heard there's a furious debate that raged between the students and the professors. And this debate was not about common issues like health care, immig immigration, or carbon emissions. It was about which subway station was the best to use for your daily commute. <laughs> the debate was intense, and I heard the students faced off with the professors. Some went so far as to count the number of steps required to get to certain stops. <laughs> so I asked, how many steps did it take? Well, that is a backdrop. Allow me the opportunity to provide maybe some useful advice. First and foremost, if I could be so bold, I would encourage you as you begin your college career to treat each other with dignity and respect. My wife Kim often reminds me to just be kind. Words to live by, gang. Our world and this college will be a better place if we heed this advice. Next, I would ask you and encourage you to focus on learning. Albert Einstein stated the value of an education is not just the learning of many facts, but the training of the mind to think something that cannot be learned just from textbooks. I submit Einstein's point is that you are learning more than facts from books. You are learning to apply wisdom, ethics, sound judgment to facts in order to come to a just and sound conclusion. You should never pass up the opportunity to learn. Whether you're taking economics, biology, art, history, whatever the course is, never pass on an opportunity to absorb knowledge from each other, from your faculty, throughout the time you're here. My next piece of advice is simple. Be grateful. Tell your parents and those responsible for providing you this educational opportunity, thank you. I serve with thousands of quality men and women your age. While there is a variety of reasons why they join the United States Air Force, a recurring theme is they want a chance to pursue a college education and simply don't have the financial means to do so. Folks, there are no do-overs in life. Well, there's one being a grandparent. <laughs> I say it's God's way of giving the second chance after you messed up as a parent. <laughs> Your time at college is going to rapidly fly by. So don't squander the amazing opportunities you will have here by half-stepping, half-stepping your way through. From here on out, don't just do enough to get by. But get by by doing as much as you can. I want to repeat that again. Class of 2019. Don't just do enough to get by. 
but get by by doing as much as you can. Commit yourselves to adhering to core values. Let me share with you our Air Force values of integrity first. I was very moved by your honor. Service before self and excellence in all that you do. I'd also tell you to be humble and to listen. You might not believe it, but you don't have all the answers yet. The habits and practices that you have established now are the habits and practices that you will have in the future. Aristotle said, men acquire a particular quality by constantly acting a particular way. You become just by performing just actions, temperate by performing temperate actions, and brave by performing brave actions. Finally, my last piece of advice. I dare you, class of 2019, I dare you to try to be great. In sports, it's often said, no pain, no gain. One of our former presidents of the United States said it much better than I did. After he's out of office, Theodore Roosevelt delivered a speech in Paris ironically, on 23 April 1910. It's called the Citizenship in a Republic. Ponder these words with me. The man in the arena. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how strong men stumble, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, but there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his or her place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory nor defeat. Class, all of you are on a journey. And these years of your lives are a pivotal point that will have a huge impact in shaping your future. If you are a painter, go paint. If you are an author, go write. But take positive steps to become the person that you want to become. And I ask you to remember, treat people kindly. Focus on learning. Be grateful. Don't half step. And dare to be great. I wish each of you the very best in the days and weeks ahead as you tackle the exciting challenges that lay ahead. Thank you. Oh, Rand, thank you so much. We have a tradition here at the end of this ceremony to give a coin to the members of the class of 2019 and it has your class year on it. This year we have an opportunity to understand that tradition in terms of another tradition and that's a military tradition. And I'm going to present this coin to General Rand, one of your class coins to General Rand and ask him if he could tell us a little bit about the military tradition related to round metal objects. <laughs> Thanks. Alrighty. Gladly. First of all, thank you for the coin. So the class of 2019, don't be caught without this, okay? <laughs> this is, uh, in the military, it signifies the unit you're from, and every one of the units have their own coin. It'll have a, a cool saying on it. it. It replicates who they belong to, that squad that they're part of, the squad. And it identifies who they are. And once in a while, one of your buddies will come up to you and challenge you and say, reach in their pocket and go, huh, coin check. Don't be caught without your coin. 
Because if you do that, then you gotta go buy that Big Mac that you guys were eating in Paris, okay? <laughs> but, be careful, if you challenge someone, and they have a coin, guess what? You go buy them the Big Mac. <laughs> but this builds esprit de corps, and I gotta tell you folks, this is a real privilege for me. If you ever come to my office, as my friend Murray did yesterday, what do you think, about a thousand coins in my office? It's a real token of appreciation and camaraderie, and when someone gives you their coin, it's a real honor and a real privilege to accept it. So Dr. Rowe, I accept this very gratefully, and all the best to you and the university. Thank you very much. Thank you. So hold on to your challenge coins in case you need it someday. Now, in the spirit of an esprit de corps, would you please rise and sing our alma mater? Thank you. 